These are the four basic parts of doing bacterial transformation, and we'll walk through them together. Now, if you were doing this lab at school, you'd follow protocol, which is a specific set of instructions for different lab procedures. Instead, we'll share some short videos and images to help you get a sense of what needs to be done for each step. We'll start with our stock of E. coli bacteria. This is what we're trying to get our plasmid into so that we can make the green fluorescent protein. We use this inoculating loop to swipe across the top of the agar and get a little bit of bacteria off of there. We're going to put this in a tube labeled plus DNA. Now inside of this tube is calcium chloride. We're going to stab and twizzle and make sure we get the bacteria off of the loop and into the calcium chloride. Next we'll use our lab burner to clean our loop. Now you may use plastic inoculating loops in your classroom, in which case you'd use individual ones. So we're going back to our stock E. coli bacteria. We're going to swipe across the top. We don't want to dig down into that agar. And we're going to put this in the tube labeled minus DNA. Again, we're going to stab and twizzle the loop in there to make sure that the bacteria gets off into that calcium chloride. And now that our bacteria is in there, we're going to make sure that it is mixed well with the calcium chloride. One way we can do that is by flicking the tube. Make sure you have a good grip on the top before you do this. The second way you can do this is called racking your microtube. You use your microtube rack and you run the tube across the top of it. It does a really good job of mixing up the bacteria into that calcium chloride. So now we're ready to add our Pequence plasma DNA. We set our micropipette to 10 microliters. We get a fresh tip on there. Here's our plasma DNA. And we're going to add this to only one of these tubes. We're going to add it to the tube that is labeled plus DNA. So remember what we have in here right now. We have our calcium chloride, we have our bacteria, and now we have the plasma DNA in it. So that's it for the first part of the lab. Now we're going to move on to part two, which is the ice bath and then the heat shock. So we're going to take both of our tubes and use a styrofoam floaty to put them in our ice bath. Now technically that's crushed ice, which works fine. You can use ice cubes with a little bit of water to create a water bath as well. It's important that both of the tubes are deep down into the ice for this incubation. We're going to leave them on ice for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes on ice, you bring your cup over to the water bath for the next step, which is something we call the heat shock. You see that it's at 42 degrees Celsius, which is actually quite warm. You're going to take your floaty or float both tubes into the water bath and we're going to do this for exactly 50 seconds. When your 50 seconds is up, you want to take your tubes out of the water bath and put them immediately back into your ice. We're going to leave it here for two minutes. After your two minutes is up, you want to take those tubes back off of the ice and put them into your microtube rack. All right, we made it through part two of the lab. Before we head on to part three, let's do a quick review of what this bacteria has gone through. We mentioned that we added it to calcium chloride, but we didn't talk too much about what calcium chloride does. It permeabilizes the outside of the cell membrane and cell walls of the bacteria. That means it's making little holes or creating small pores. Why would we want to do that? Then we put those bacteria into an ice bath and then we did our 42 degree heat shock. So that bacteria has been through quite a bit. That's why in part three, we're gonna take care of them by feeding them with something called LB. In order to do that, we're gonna take our micropipette and set it to 300 microliters. There's our LB at the top of the microtube rack. You can see it's yellow in color what it has in it are sugars and amino acids that the bacteria need in order to be able to grow. So we're going to add the LB right on top. 
to our plus DNA tube. Then we're going to add LB to our minus DNA tube. And let's talk about what's in that minus DNA tube. We have bacteria in there as well. We had the calcium chloride, but we did not add the plasmid to this tube. There was no DNA added to this bacteria. So we've given both sets of bacteria LB. Now we're going to let them recover at 37 degrees Celsius in an incubator from anywhere between 5 and 20 minutes. So we've completed part three of the lab. We fed our bacteria the LB and we let them recover in that nice warm incubator from 5 to 20 minutes. In the last part of the lab, we're going to plate our bacteria. We're going to put them on top of a plate that contains something called agar. There's our bacteria, nice and warm and ready to be plated. Now we're going to pause this for a minute. So these are our agar plates. Now agar is a little bit like firmed up jello. And even though these plates look the same, we could add different things to the agar when it's liquid uh, before it cools down to this firm texture. And so let's take a look at what we added to each of these plates because it's going to be important when you're looking at your results later. So in this first plate, and sometimes we call these petri dishes, you may have heard that before, we've added LB. So you might remember that LB contains sugars and amino acids that bacteria really love and need in order to grow. Now this plate here has LB, but it has ampicillin as well. And ampicillin, as you may have read in the student guide, is a type of antibiotic. So this plate is different than this one in that, yes, it has sugars and amino acids, but it also has an antibiotic on it. This plate here is the same. And this final plate has LB. It also contains ampicillin, the antibiotic. It also contains arabinose. It ends in OSE, so you know it's a type of sugar. So this plate is unique. It's different than these other three. And this will be important when you're making sense of your results from this transformation. One final thing I need to point out before we go to the video on plating. You'll notice that this plate is labeled with minus DNA. That means it will get the bacteria that did not receive the plasmid. This plate also will receive the same bacteria, the bacteria that did not get the plasmid DNA. These two plates here are labeled with plus DNA. Here we're going to plate the bacteria that did receive the plasmid, as well as in this plate here, we'll also get the bacteria that did receive the plasmid. That's really important to keep in mind when you go to your results later. Okay, so let's get to the plating. We've set our micropipette for 150 microliter. And as we just discussed, we're going to begin with the minus DNA bacteria. That's the bacteria that did not receive the plasmid. And you start by turning your plate or Petri dish over. Dribble the bacteria on top of the agar. Then put the lid back on and give it a little swirl. This will evenly coat the bacteria on top of the agar. For the next plate, we add the minus DNA bacteria to the LB amp agar plate. We'll then switch our tips and we'll grab the bacteria that is the plus DNA bacteria. This is the bacteria that did receive the plasmid. That first plate is an LB amp plate. And the second plate is the LB amp ARA plate. So we've successfully plated our bacteria and we're going to leave them upright for 15 minutes. This allows them time to soak into the agar. Next, we'll turn the plates over and put them into a 37 degree Celsius incubator. And we're going to leave them there overnight. When we come back, we'll be able to look at the results from our bacterial transformation.